If I was going to tell, write a story about my sexual exploits, I would probably call it Fifty Shades of Green. For one reason, I'm 100% Irish, and so of course we like all shades of green. But the other part is that I am green when it comes to a lot of things, and sex would be one of them. So the story I want to tell you tonight is the story of my first orgy. Because uh, that was a very different shade of sex for me. Uh, but before you get too excited, my first orgy was my last orgy. Uh, because if I am anything, I am Irish. And remember my people. We are an uptight, repressed, rigid Catholic country. So there's not a Don Juan in the crowd for the most part. So this was uh, many years after I graduated from college in Boston, and a bunch of us from school were back in Boston for uh, a long weekend. And we're all sort of hanging out on, on Saturday trying to figure out where we want to go out dancing. So it's, uh, you know, it's sort of most of the group is straight, some of us are gay, you know, sort of like the rest of the world. And, um, <laughs> And so, you know, everyone knows that gay bars have better music and better drinks and are just better places to go. But the straight guys don't really like going to gay bars because it's so uncomfortable for them. Well, it's actually uncomfortable for me too, you know, because remember my people. Um, so we decide that we're going to hit a couple of gay bars and then we'll end up at a straight club, a dance club at the end of the night. So it's, it's your, you know, typical, you know, gay bar, you know, great amazing music, good ambiance. There are like hunky guys in underwear dancing on the bar and dancing on the speakers and in cages off the ceiling, you know, sort of like Lewiston. Uh, <laughs> or or, or maybe, maybe not Lewiston, maybe Portland um, is where all the cage boys are. And, uh, and so the straight guys, you know, sort of get a little nervous. I do too, because I don't really like my men in cages. <laughs> and uh, the end of the night, we, we end up at a triplex. Uh, you know, three floors of throbbing house music with sweaty people dancing until three o'clock in the morning. And at the, at the end of the night, my college roommate uh, comes up to me and he said, you know, Kevin, he said, I've been talking to some people and they're having an after hours party. Um, do you want to go? And I thought, oh my God, like this is perfect because it meets my three criteria. I'm not drunk, I'm not tired, and I'm still having a good time. So why not keep the evening going? So we walk over to the back bay area to this huge apartment. I, I don't think I've ever been to an apartment that big since. And there's about 20 people there. Some are dancing, some are drinking, some are hanging out talking. And if you've ever gone to an after hours party, you know it's kind of risky because it could just be a bunch of drunk stoned people playing Xbox, <laughs> you know, and so it's not really anything fun. And I sort of thought this is going to be a really fun party. It's summer. And so after about like a half hour, some of the guys took off their shirts, you know. It's, I, I don't do that, but other people do. And I thought, that's okay. But then some of the women started taking off their shirts. And I thought, okay, well, that's, that's more unusual. Um, but, you know, you know, Kevin, you're, you know, you're cool. You're not cool. You're Irish. You're Irish. So it will go fine. And so I went into the bathroom at one point, and when I came out, there was this couple making out just outside the bathroom, and there was another couple making out just over to the side. Now, this is not unusual in high school, but when you're in your 30s, like, there, you just don't go to make out parties anymore because you can make out at home. <laughs> like, you don't have to make out at a party. <laughs> and so I noticed that these sort of little make out pairs were sort of like gravitating toward the other makeout pairs and they were forming makeout clusters <laughs> around the room. And then their clothes started coming off. So I freaked out, you know, and I'm looking for Curtis and he's in some cluster grope going on somewhere. And I go into the kitchen and I down a beer really fast, you know, liquid courage, and it's like, you know, let's do it, let's do it, let's just do it. And so I go back out into the living room and this guy comes up to me, actually a very cute guy, and he said, he's like, uh, you're going to join in, aren't you? And I'm like, oh, totally. I said, <laughs> I said I'm, I'm just waiting for the bathroom. <laughs> it's like, you know, yeah, you got to pee before you have an orgy. Um, you know, and so, so I, go into the, I go into the bathroom, and 
out loud, I'm saying to myself, you can do this, Kevin. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. And inside, I'm saying, you have no breath mints. You did not floss. <laughs> what underwear did you wear when you got up this morning? Like, and I just could not reconcile those two parts. And so I snuck out and walked a couple of miles to a friend's and stayed overnight. In the morning, Curtis called me saying, what happened to you last night? I was so worried. It's like, mm, yeah, mm, yeah, so worried, <laughs> yeah. It's now 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, where did you go? And I said, well, I wasn't really comfortable with the whole orgy thing. <laughs> and he said, well, you didn't have to leave. You could have stayed and watched. <laughs> and I said, I, yeah, that's who I've always wanted to be. <laughs> the guy who goes to an orgy and sits in a chair with his clothes on, <laughs> drinking a beer, watching people have sex. I, it's like I already have enough issues already. <laughs> so I call this my first orgy, but I'm not really sure if you can say you've been to an orgy unless you've participated. Thanks. <laughs>